Alright, I made my block out of a much bigger piece than I needed. But I didn't I don't have a set screw long enough. Uh, you need something with some, you know, probably a half inch thread. So I decided to just use this bolt. Uh, I don't know why I had this laying around, but I had the head ground off of it, so drilled a hole to counter countersunk a hole to so that head recesses in there. Then I'm just gonna tap threads into that uh, through hole and cut this to size and then we can uh, put it on our sled. And that gives me about an eighth of an inch adjustment, which should be plenty. All right, I was ho hoping to use uh, my drill driver to put a mark on here, but it's probably better to do it this way anyway. I've got my fence set at approximately 90 degrees, I guess I'll put it that way. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I haven't made this the zero clearance cut yet, but we're going to be close enough. I've given myself three credit cards distance back. Got my adjusting screw uh, fully retracted. And then I've got this clamp to the table. And I'm just going to get my two marks here. Should do it because I was right on the there. They were just per, just protruding a fraction before I clamped this in place. There we go. That's perfect. All right now, I know that I know that this is the upside here, so I'm put an X on this. So my screws are coming out, but and then they're going to come in from this direction. So I'm going to drill through holes here and countersunk holes on the bottom. Then we can attach it and adjust our fence to perfect 90, hopefully. Be good once that gets by that. Uh, and once it gets countersunk, the, the threads will be into the wood, and this will be pulling that piece tight to the to the sled. All right, I got the X side up. Screws are just started here. I'm going to start it a little bit more, I think. There we go. That's good and solid. I was thinking about gluing it, but I don't think that's necessary. So I'm a little bit off of this edge, which is which is good, and then I'm I'm off of this edge as well. So there's that's less than 90, or greater than 90, I should say. Get some of this stuff out of the way here. I can show you where I'm at. So I've got a gap here, probably about an eighth of an inch. And now I can adjust this out.
That's too far. That'll be good for a first cut right there. Let me make my, my uh, rip cut, my zero clearance cut. Then we'll get a test board on there. It's got to come. It's got to come back a little. Perfect. No movement whatsoever. Take that all day long right there. Let me stand this up so you can see what I'm looking at. The next right here.
thought I noticed daylight right there, but that's that's just white on the uh, on the uh, aluminum. There's no gap there. All right, making the end caps for that uh, fence on my table sliding table. Um, I've got enough stock here to do plenty, but it's one of those things, I guess, while you're doing it, you might as well get it done uh, at one time. So, I've got my setup here. Uh, I couldn't find my, I have a 40 millimeter piece of wood somewhere, but I'm just using this piece of extrusion as my spacer. And um, I'll drill my first hole, and then the second one, flip this around, do the same thing. This is relatively centered. Um, it's it's not perfect, but it's close enough, and I'll show you why here in a minute. So I'm going to drill my uh, countersunk holes first for my bolts and washer, and then um, I'll do this one. I, I'm not going to do this one right now. I'm going to leave this one alone. So I'll have uh, I'll end up with four, maybe five. I can get one more out of here. These X's represent the side that is not square okay so this is the square side these these uh, two edges are perpendicular to this face going to be three eighths. these to length and then we'll uh, see how they work out on our, on our as an end cap here. All right you can see now why I've got that 3 8 hole it gives me a little bit of movement um, front to back and up and down so it looks like it's a good fit here these are 5 16 bolts I could make that, I could make that, uh, that through hole a little bit bigger. Now what I want to do here is make this flush. Let me grab a block here for just a second. And that's good right there. Snow goes up by hand. Get this out of the way. That's good. Now I can tighten them. Okay, that looks good. The reason I was getting a little clip there was because I was pulling this back. Into that little bit of tape around the extrusion. I want to make sure it stays on this bottom edge here. Which, when I do that, it is flush, so that's good. Now this blade is just a um, 
rip blade. Well, that, you can see that end is pretty rough. We'll see if we can square it up here. My bolts are 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 well past this cut edge, so that's that's the reason for that uh, recess. Let's just see what happens here with this. That's a 24 tooth rip blade. That's a pretty nice cut. Let's see how we are for square here. That's good enough for me, I'll tell you that. Let me show you that up close here. That's dead nut square, and there's no chip out on the back side. Let's see, this one on that one. So this is the back side. Beautiful. Be even better with an 80 tooth crosscut blade. So now I've got zero clearance. On the bottom and the back, my bolts are well uh, away from the blade, probably by an eighth of an inch. That's, that's, that's perfect. So there you have it, a nice, nice way to make a sled that's easily adjusted to 90. I mean, now I can dial it in with this. Uh, set screw or bolt, whatever you decide to use. You could even use a knob if you wanted. I might think about doing that. All right, a quick update here. After uh, kind of talking myself into it, I made a new block here. So instead of having to use a tool, I've got this knob to make my adjustment. And uh, this is a little tip for you too. When you when you thread your hardwood, you can see how the um, the taper on this tap, there's little to no threads at the beginning and then they slowly uh, go to full depth or full cut. So as your, as your ta um, tap is coming through the wood and you start to see this just probably about that much in my case, I stopped short basically and then backed it out and I, I let my threaded rod here uh, finish threading it and it gives you a nice tight uh, fit that that takes you know it's not going to loosen up on you while your saw is vibrating or whatever this thing is going to be is going to stay in the position that I put it in because it's uh, it's just got that nice tight fit there in that last eighth of an inch I suppose so you just have to work a little harder with your knob but once you thread that with the with the uh, threader rod you're using, or whatever you're using, um, that gives you that extra grip. Okay, this is the blade side. This is my square corner. Let me show you a square here. I mean, that's, 
It's beautiful. And I'm pushing gently on the side here, keeping this tight. There's no daylight there. There's no wiggle whatsoever. You can hear it nice and straight. All both of these are perfect. Let me show you the opposite side here, the the uh, sled side. So this is, you see that edge. And that's, that's to be expected because the blade is coming through that on top. Let me flip it around. Maybe. So this is the sled side. I mean there's just little to no tear out. I mean if there's any it's minute. Alright, thanks for watching.